I am a Kemezie blessing. This is my husband, my lovely husband. We are from Oka, Anambra State, Nigeria. So, in the evening of uh, 18th March 2004, uh, I came back and woke him to ask him some questions. He was sleeping. So after asking him some questions, he told me 10 minutes or so later that he's having a headache, severe headache. I, I said, mm, it is going to stop. And that was it. The headache never stopped. Throughout the night, in the morning, I went to school and came back earlier to see how he was doing. I discovered that his breakfast was there. He didn't eat and he was vomiting. I was worried. We did give him pain relieving tablets um, and other things to stop the vomiting and the headache. It couldn't. Everything continued until Thursday morning, and that was on the on the twentieth. So we went to the hospital. I asked the doctor. The doctor could not explain. The treatment continued, but it wasn't getting any better. Nothing changed. The headache continued, the vomiting continued, he couldn't eat. By evening of a Friday, he was able to get up and sit on a chair. I discovered that his left eye could not open. So on Sunday, personally, I went to the doctor's room and asked him, what is going on? Nothing is happening. There is no change. In fact, he's deteriorating. He can't even recognize people that are coming to see him. So the doctor said that we are going to go to a specialist hospital so that they know why the eye was shot. He made arrangements on Monday, we went there. The eye specialist called him on phone and advised him that we should go for MRI in a nearby state, Enugu. So we went on Tuesday and when we got there, we paid for the MRI. Then I asked the doctor what is wrong. The doctor said he has a pituitary tumor that we should come for surgery immediately, that we shouldn't waste time. So fortunately for us, uh, a man who has uh, received the uh, treatment from care hospital is from the same town, Nobi. We learned that uh, his own case was worse than ours, that his two eyes were shut and he was almost unconscious. But he came here, he came back to Nigeria, feeling fine, doing his business, in fact, people were surprised because everybody thought at that time that he's dead. So my in-law told me that we can still visit that same care hospital. So that was how we started writing to the international desk through Eva Paul. And then we got all the things we needed, like the approximate uh, biomedical bill, the invitation letter, and all the other information that are important that will enable us to come to India. So to show that they are really care hospital, immediately we are, we are in the room. In fact, I was surprised. The doctors started coming. Eh, what is wrong? What are the symptoms? When did this start? And so on. And they were writing, another doctor will come immediately. It didn't waste time. So that was how it continued. Every morning, afternoon, evening, they, they would like to come to ask us so many questions and they would take blood samples. The nurses would come for blood samples and they said, even that morning, they said, giving us uh, medication, preparing him for the, for the surgery. So I was very happy because that was an assurance that we are in safe hands. When they were preparing me for the for the operation proper, my sugar level rose. And um, in Nigeria, I know it used to be 80. Uh, highest I had was 108. But the thing rose above 100 and... No, 250. 200 and something, you see. So the doctors came in promptly and told me, look, you don't have to worry. We are giving you some... Medication. medication that made your sugar to rise. Don't worry. Before the operation proper, we bring it down and do the operation. 
and that was and how it, that was it. You see it? Uh -huh. So the nutritionist, her own side, she will come and ask me, okay, what will you like to eat? I say, give me food that discourages sugar so that the medication will have a direct support immediately. She will go, instruct their, his, uh, this thing, they will prepare my it own food me. and bring for me. Because of the way they were brought up, the training they were given, they are always there. Just press the bell, they are there. At least two will be running to come and attend to you. And that is what I meant when I said that the word C-A-R-E is put in practice when you come into the impatient uh, side of the care hospital. The most interesting side of it is that no minute is wasted in care hospital. Everybody, be you in the nursing section, be you in the food or nutrition, be you in the cleaning, every place working 24 hours to achieve the company's objective. It's not easy. So we are very grateful to you people. When we were coming to India, the doctor that said we should do the surgery in Nigeria told me, if you are going to India, you will be alone with your husband. Nobody. If it's in Nigeria, your brothers, your sisters, everybody will be coming. I said, I know that. But my brother is insisting that we are going to India. I said, I can cope. And really, I was able to cope because of the wonderful people in care hospital. They were there for me when I needed a hug, when I needed a handshake, when I needed somebody to talk to. They were always there because they really care. So that is why I am especially grateful. And I will always continue to recommend care hospital.